Hello, lovely world. How's your Friday? Welcome to Form Check Friday. Everybody's favorite part of Friday. It's a lot of alliteration there. Anyways, how's everybody doing? Hopefully you're getting ready for a wonderful weekend. We are about to dive into some submitted videos, starting off with our boy, George, from last time. Oh no, I didn't get the swipe. There it is. Okay, so... George is doing some squats. Uh, he says he's interested in powerlifting. He says he's had a lot of injuries in his shoulder and low back previously uh, and has no pain in squats though. So he's wondering a few things and I thought this would provoke some discussion in the comments last week and I'm gonna give my two cents this week. So he's wondering if he should A, stretch his chest more. Uh, B, lower the bar, go into a low bar position. And C, he wants to know about activating his glutes more without switching to low bar. All right, so first we're gonna look at uh, basically just what I'm seeing with the technique and then we'll get into answering some of your questions here, George. So I think the first thing I'm gonna say is that I would like to see a bit of a different bar position here. Um, not even in terms of where the bar is on your back, but uh, it's super choppy right now. Again, Dylan, I don't know if like... <laughs> All right, sorry, we had some technical difficulties there. Now, what I was saying was that I think, not necessarily bar position, but back position. So number one, I think we're a little bit crunched over. It looks like we're forcing our grip really narrow, which forces our wrists super cocked back, which forces our elbows super cocked back. And then when we get into the bottom position, we end up kind of folding over. We're also looking like straight down. So a few things I would change with what you're doing in terms of your upper back position. Number one, Widen that grip a little bit. Try to bring those elbows a little more down in line with your trunk, especially in the bottom. We wanna see a little more of the elbows in line here. Now, your back actually looks quite good here, but looking straight down, yeah. It's one of those things that like, it's not inherently bad, but in a lot of people, it's gonna end up Either we're gonna see the butt shoot up, the knees shoot back, and see some of those kinds of faults creep in, or we're gonna start getting pitched forward. So, while looking straight down, I maybe wouldn't recommend, but if you can look straight out so that your uh, kind of head is maybe a little bit more in line with your back at this position, I think that would be something that would be advisable. Now, in terms of stretching your chest, uh, I think again, like we don't really need to be doing like a static chest stretch, I don't know is gonna have any real impact on how well you're able to hold the bar as much as just getting onto the bar more often. So one thing that I do personally, since I've gone up a weight class, it's tough for me to get under the bar in my normal grip. So I'll start out really wide and just kind of get under the bar and get the bar to where I want it on my back, hold it, and then just get out from under the bar, kind of like move my shoulders around a little bit and then get back under the bar and start gradually working my grip in. And at some point along the way, start squatting nice and light because the added weight does help to kind of get everything feeling a little bit more locked in. Um, and just take your time with your warmups, you know? Uh, I think practicing the skill of putting the bar in a good position is probably gonna be the best way to get the bar in a good position. Does that make sense, right? Um, in terms of the l a lower bar position, I think it's definitely worth a try. Uh, I think that for anyone out there, whether they're more comfortable high bar or low bar, it's definitely worth experimenting with different bar positions, right? Even if you just treat it as a separate exercise and try doing some low bar squats on an off day, like as an accessory movement. Um, you know, I think that that's just a worthwhile thing to do to see, maybe you're way better that way. I've had plenty of clients um, and plenty of athletes over the years who have just moved the bar a little bit and been like, oh my God, squatting makes sense. Um, and likewise, move the bar a little bit up in some cases. So it's definitely worth playing with. Now, in terms of the fabled glute activation, um, that one's tricky because it hinges again on some language that isn't really founded in science and in what we know about how the human body works. There isn't really, in order for there to be a way to activate the glutes, uh, it implies that there's a condition where the glutes aren't active or aren't on or working or whatever. And this is kind of a fallacy. It kind of doesn't really work like that. If you're standing, your glutes are on, your glutes are activated. Um, if you're squatting, your glutes are very much on and activated. So 
I think I know what you mean, and it's that you're not really feeling your glutes contributing to the lift. And the reason I'm getting a bit semantic here is because I think language really matters when we're trying to convey ideas. So what I would recommend is if you're not getting like the glute work feeling or you're feeling that they're not contributing or, or, or like, I don't know, it's, it's a, it is a feeling though and I definitely get what you're saying, is I would try to put more weight back on your heels. A lot of the times if we can shift that load back a little bit more, we'll get a little bit more out of the posterior chain. We'll get feeling a little bit more like the posterior chain is is prioritized or he more heavily involved in the lift. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say put more weight back on your heels, try to sit back a little bit more, uh, and you can probably get, you know, expect to get a little bit more feeling out of that area. But yeah, all right, that's it for that. So let's move on to our next video from Frederick. All right, so Frederick here is 19. He's from Norway. Uh, he says he power lifts mostly just for fun and that he feels really tight on the descent, but that his elbows flare out like crazy on the way up. Uh, he said he's tried the cues of bending the bar, keeping the lats tight, uh, and nothing seems to help. So um, let's dive in. So number one, I think the grip is a little bit narrow. Again, that's my own bias. I tell everybody to widen their grip. Uh, it's pretty much a meme by this point, but I honestly do think that a wider grip is gonna help you get your elbows in a better position. The other thing is, I think we're over tucking. I think that we're compensating for a problem that doesn't exist. Uh, it's like when people, people's knees come in a little bit to like a neutral range in their squat and they think like, oh crap, my knees are moving a little bit. I need to push my knees out harder. So you end up with this on the descent and this on the ascent where if you just did this on the descent and the ascent, and what I mean by that is kind of just pushing the knees forward, allowing them to track where they want, instead of having this idea that they need to be way out, similar to what we're doing here, where you're thinking your elbows need to be super far tucked in, and then you can't press like that, so your elbows come out. What I would do is on the way down, let your elbows out a little more. Holy cow, I'm asymmetrical. On the way down, don't worry about tucking your elbows so much. Let them flare out a little bit. Try to keep them under the bar, maybe slightly in front of the bar, but you're like here. And the reason that we're not able to press like that is because here isn't a strong position. Here is, right? So you're just gonna be more comfortable, a little bit more flared out. And generally, a little bit more flared out goes hand in hand with a wider grip. That's why I suggest that. So yeah, I definitely see as we go to press, a huge scoop in the shoulder. The other thing is, we're getting super loose in the bottom. You got this huge arch, your butt is way off the bench here. I can see daylight from the front, so that tells me that your butt is way off the bench. Um, and I think we're just like maybe using too much weight, and there's a reason we can't hold any position in the shoulders because we're using too much weight, right? So dial the weight back, keep your butt down on the bench, even if that means a little bit less arch. Let's widen that grip. Try to control the bar in the bottom position, right? Because the press looks okay until we get into that bottom and then we're just like, oh, and we're just, we're just losing it because we have this very low tolerance for any kind of load in the bottom range of motion. We're not strong, we're not controlled there because we're skipping that range of motion like I've talked about the last, uh, last week when we're kind of rushing through that bottom position and not pausing and not staying in control, not keeping the weight of the bar in the hands. Whew. Anyways. Those are all of the things I think you can do to improve. Um, and yeah, definitely like, like this is a good position with your, with your body. Like look at, you know, where we are here versus how much we're reaching the, the belly more than the chest up to the bar. And like I said, we can see daylight. You're like you're just creating an arch that doesn't, isn't gonna be able to exist in any real powerlifting sense because we're gonna need the butt on the bench. So, yeah man, there's work to do. Don't get discouraged. Don't feel like I tore you apart or anything like that. Uh, my goal here is definitely just to help, okay? So there are a lot of things to work on. Hopefully I didn't over inundate you with too much, but stick with it, slow down. Don't get ahead of yourself, you're a young guy. Take your time, you got tons of years and a five year head start on when I started lifting, so who knows what you could accomplish. All right, now we have Quinn. Quinn is doing some deadlifts here. All right, so Quinn is doing some deadlifts here and uh, he says he's new to sumo. This is a set of sticks at between 70 and 80%. Um, and he said right when he switched to sumo from conventional, he had instant success. Everything felt a lot better right away. 
Um, he says his background's slightly, which kind of bugs him, but when he looks at it, it feels really good. Or, or sorry, when he, when he does it, it feels good. Uh, it just looks a little bit off when he looks at it. So let's take a look here. I mean, if you're looking to get a flat back position, we should at least be able to create it at the sort of onset of the lift in the setup, right? So one thing that we're not doing is we're not creating a neutral back position. So either we're going to learn to be okay with a bit of a rounded back because that's fine. Um, and, and a lot of strong, strong deadlifters who are injured no more often than any other deadlifter uh, pull with rounded backs. It's okay. Um, but if your goal is to try to pull with a rounded back, I think we're going to need to perhaps let the knees either get the knees forward more or back more. It's going to be a little bit tough to say, but in this position, we basically want to get a little, the last little bit of extension out of the hips, right? Or out, out of the low back, sorry, the low back. Uh, where we want to see this instead of this, right? Because we can see the tailbone's kind of tucked under a little bit. So some cat-cow exercises would be a good way to kind of feel that out and see what that feels like. The other thing I would do is, in this position, make your priority getting that back flat before you pull your hips down, right? As opposed to making the priority pulling your hips down and then trying to get your back flat, try to flatten your back here and then hold it as you pull your hips into position. So it's going to change your setup a little bit, but if a flat back is something that, uh, and I think it's worth experimenting, right? Worth trying to see if you if you feel better in that position um, because you are just kind of starting with sumo. So you have plenty of room to play around and find what your technique is gonna feel like. It might be that you're better with a rounded back. That's fine. It might be better that it might feel better. It might move better. It might feel healthier with a rounded back. That's fine. Um, you're not getting a huge amount of lockout issue with your rounded back here, which makes me think that that's probably, or maybe at least the case. Um, but yeah, if you're looking to try to flatten your back position, don't worry so much about getting your hips low. Think about keeping your hips back, like point them back at something way back. Oh, just covered my arrow. Point them back at something way back there, right? Like you're trying to pull your hips almost away from the bar, if that makes sense. Um, but the big thing is, yeah, that last little bit of extension in the low back. Alrighty, so up next we have Laura, and uh, Laura's doing 160 for six here. Uh, she says she's been powerlifting around five years, and her first meet is in a few weeks. So one of the things she mentioned is that she just got sleeves, uh, and that they're really throwing her off quite a bit. Um, she wonders if I have any specific thoughts on how to use them, and she's also kind of wondering about her upper back and elbows a little bit. So. First thing I noticed with the sleeves is they are super, super low. She mentioned that they're super, uh, super, 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 super. I like that word today. Um, she mentioned that they are really difficult for her to get on, right? Which is gonna explain why they're riding so low on her leg. So here's my advice with getting the sleeves on. Number one, roll the bottom up onto itself. Number two, roll the top down onto itself so that you only have this much of it actually in contact with your knee. Wrap your fingers under the bottom so that you can grab a double ply layer of the sleeve and then pull up. That's my quick sleeve tips. Um, Cause yeah, these look like your knee joints probably about here and the sleeve is about here, right? So we generally would wanna be knee joint right in the middle of the sleeve. So they'll get uh, stretched out a little bit. You'll get used to them as time goes on. Um, so the big thing here, and I see this a lot, but you're kind of like forcing a lot of um, like anti-extension anti or, or something like that. Um, but you're like tucking your butt underneath you and, and really flattening out your low back before you start. But then when you go to start your squat, we necessarily, and, and you know, as a function of just doing a squat, we end up with the hips out behind us. So I think that that part is maybe not as necessary. Some people do that because it helps them like feel their glutes a little bit, which is fine if that's the case, whatever. Um, but I think, yeah, like, tucking the butt in underneath you and then having to swing it back out just makes for like a very different feeling um, between standing at the top and how your squats feel. Um, in terms of the squat itself, I don't think you're really doing anything wrong. One thing that I could recommend, and, and I usually use this kind of cueing for somebody who's new to knee wraps, uh, is that, you know, the knee wraps and the knee sleeves in this case are going to essentially restrict and, and fight against knee flexion. Um, so one of the things that that's going to do is it's going to often 
trying to get you to like stay more forward because the further back you go, um, the deeper we're gonna get in the squat, the more extreme the angle of knee flexion. So try to like sit back into them a little bit, if that makes sense. Um, it looks like you're doing a fine job of it here. It might just be kind of like messing with your head, uh, thinking that, you know, it's having more of an impact than it is. Your squats actually look quite good. Now, in terms of your upper back and elbows, uh, I do think that we could maybe play around with this bar position. You have a meet in like a few weeks though, you said, right? So I wouldn't play around with anything too big just yet. After the meet, I would play around with some, some like maybe a lower bar position. Um, I would play around with trying to get the elbows a little more in line with your body in the bottom, although it looks like you're doing a pretty good job keeping your upper back tight. We do see a slight bit of that bar pulling you forward out of the hole, so. I think there could be some work done on that upper back position uh, and the elbows and, and maintaining more tension in that uh, sort of shoulder girdle as you come out of the bottom. And again, I think like we have a sort of natural curve uh, on our upper back, right? Where the shoulder sits. So having the bar up here is gonna make it a lot easier for it to roll forward than having the bar here, if that makes sense. Might not be the best color to show that, give me a sec. Than having the bar here, right? So that's why sometimes I think moving to a bit of a lower bar position can be uh, can be helpful. So that's my two cents. Alrighty, and now we have Oliver. So Oliver here has been training for about four years or working out for four years. Uh, he says he's 42 years old. It's mostly done CrossFit in the past, and this is a set of five at 185 pounds. So he's wondering for uh, asking about advice for his programming and his technique. So programming wise, uh, it's probably a much more complex discussion than we can really have here. But generally speaking, practicing the bench uh, a few times a week is gonna be good. People can generally tolerate higher frequencies, higher volumes uh, on the bench and upper body lifts. So eh, take that with a grain of salt, but that's um, some very basic programming guidelines for bench press. Now, <clears throat> there's a few things with the technique I think we could work on. Number one, let's pull these feet, can't really see it. Let's pull these feet back more. It doesn't look like they're contributing or like you're getting much leg drive out of them. So I think we could definitely use the legs to contribute more to having a bit more of an arch. The other thing is as we get to the bottom, the shoulders are really shrugged up. So I want you to think about pulling your chest actively up to the bar, keeping your shoulder blades really far down, like depressing your shoulder blades. And um, I think that's gonna help this bottom position, right? Because if we end up, as we touch, if I can get this to scrub properly. No, nope, we're not scrubbing today. All right, so here, we're in this bottom position. Uh, I think the shoulders could be a fair bit down more, like a fair bit more depressed, so that we can get into a better position to drive that bar back off the chest. Honestly, that's probably the biggest thing. The next big thing is gonna to be to try to control the bar in the bottom of the range of motion, right? Try to make sure that we're not just like loosening from here to here into the chest, because again, it's gonna be really inconsistent to try to get that bar moving the same off the chest if we don't have a whole lot of control in this part of the range of motion. Um, and yeah, work on some paused work. There's another programming suggestion. Work on, you know, trying to get into a good groove with the bar on your chest. One last thing, when you're locking out, your, your shoulders are, are popping forward after the bar. When you're locking out your bench press, I want you to think about locking the elbows. Elbows, not shoulders, right? Lockout should come from the triceps, not necessarily from the shoulder blades following it forward. All right, and now we have Drew. Drew is doing some conventional deadlift. Uh, Drew's 20 years old. He's pulling on a Texas deadlift bar here. Uh, this is about 275 for a set of five, I think, at RPE seven. So he had some questions about pulling hook. Um, he says that he is looking to get into doing some hook grip, but right now he's pulling his top set with straps. Um, so here's another discussion for the comments section. What do y'all out there think about straps for a hook grip puller? When to use them, when not to use them? Uh, what's your, how many reps are you doing with your hook grip? Are you, are you a person who's uh, hook gripping, you know, the sets of eight? Or are you like me who maybe only uses hook grip for singles and lower rep sets and then straps for everything else? And how do you find that impact your grip? Do you have any advice for our friend Drew here? If so, leave it in the comments below and I will be back next week to give my advice. 
So we will see you in the next one next Friday. Take care and have a wonderful weekend, everybody.